In this video, we'll talk about how we can deploy a Flask REST API using Heroku onto the internet so that other people can use the API as well. We'll see how we can uh, have a Flask API which was built using Flask RESTful and then deployed using Heroku, but we also have a SQLite database which is integrated with the API that will be deployed on Heroku for the internet to see. And to test whether the API has been deployed on the internet or not, we'll be using Postman to check uh, and do some API request calls, for example, a GET request or a POST request to see if our API is working properly or not. So let's get started. So first, uh, I have uh, set up an API uh, code base where you can see how the API works. And in this video, we'll only focus on deploying that API. So let me just show you how the API looks like. So here I have an app.py file, a very simple, basic Flask application, a rest, rest full application. And here, let's just go to go through the code once before we actually start with the deploying steps. So here we have uh, Flask RESTful and Flask Alchemy, which we'll be using along with Flask. And we, are, we will be deploying a to-do list API where you can uh, do a bunch of calls to the to-do list API. For example, create a to-do list using POST uh, update it using put, get all the to-dos using get, and also delete those to-do list task. So first we set up our application, initialize uh, all the objects that we need to initialize. We set up our to-do model class. So usually when you see a very typical Flask application, uh, you will notice that all of these uh, models, database models and the API and the code is actually separated using different files and different folders. But since uh, this tutorial is only focused on deploying a Flask API application, I have actually uh, culminated all of them into one single uh, app.py file. So just bear with me there. And here we have a few request passes uh, using which we actually uh, make sure that we get the task and the summary back from the user when they do a post or a put request. And this is our API. So we have two uh, URL endpoints. We have a slash todos, which gives you all the tasks. And we have slash to do slash uh, the to do ID, which will be using uh, an integer to actually post, put, get, or delete that particular to do list task. So this is how our Flask application looks like. Uh, just make sure. Uh, to see that we also have our app.run method here so that we know that this app.py file is going to actually run our uh, server and get the API up and going. So how do we deploy this using Heroku? So the process is really, really, really similar to what uh, we used to do for uh, a, fl a typical Flask application without the API, REST API part. So let's see how we do that. And since this is going to be uh, done using Heroku, uh, a free Heroku deployment method, you can do it uh, on your own PC as well. So first, uh, we need to make a requirements.txt file. So a requirements.txt file basically has all the uh, frameworks and modules that your code uses in order to run it properly. So we, are, we use Flask, we use Flask RESTful, we use Flask SQL Alchemy. But we don't use Gunicon. So Gunicon is basically something which will be using by the Heroku uh, platform to actually understand that uh, we are running a server and the server is running from app.py file. So first, before we jump on to uh, the Heroku part, let's see how we can actually uh, make a request.txt, requirements.txt file. So first, let me just copy this part now. So copy and now let's delete our requirements.txt file. So I'll be showing you a very nice way uh, of doing this, not a pip freeze uh, method, which you people usually do, but we'll be using a different method to actually generate our requirements or txt file. So let's delete it now, move it to trash. And now let's uh, go into our folder. Awesome. Now, uh, what we can do uh, to generate a requirements.txt file for this particular project. So this particular project is inside to do API folder. And we only want to 
uh, have those frameworks and modules or libraries inside the requirements or txt which are being used inside this particular directory so the uh, typical way to do this would be to actually have a virtual environment inside your to do api folder and then uh, freezing uh, using pip freeze to actually get those inside requirements or txt but uh, since I don't uh, feel like having to use a virtual environment for every single project that I do, so I just have a common Python environment and uh, then if you do a pip freeze, then it actually uh, takes up all, every single li uh, library or framework which you have in your main Python environment, right? So we have something better for this and that is called as piprex. So first we do a pip install. Piprex. So Piprex is basically an open source project uh, where you can uh, actually make a requirements or txt for your particular folder only. So to do that, it's very easy. First, go inside your uh, folder. So I'm inside to do API and just do Piprex dot. That's it. Dot is basically telling Piprex that you know we want to make the requirements or txt for this particular folder. Press enter, and we have a requirements or txt file right here so as you can see we uh, don't have the gunicon here because our uh, app.py file only uses these three for now so we just uh, paste our oh, right. gunicon here you don't have to mention the version that's completely fine and just make sure that you also have gunicon installed so just do a pip install gunicon install the Gunicon and you're good to go. So now we have a requirements.txt file. So basically uh, we need the requirement.txt file so that Heroku can actually uh, use this to set up the environment when they're deploying our application. The next thing which we need is a proc file. So a proc file is basically uh, something which is only for Heroku. So this tells Heroku that we'll be using uh, a Gunicon based web server and we will be having an app. So this is going to be app. So we're basically telling Heroku that look for an app.py file, look for an app.py file. And when you find that, run the app inside. So we have a Flask app here. So we want Heroku to actually run the app whenever it deploys it to the internet. So we just need these two things, these two extra things, uh, files to actually uh, have our API up and running onto the internet and deploy it. So now that we have our Gunicon and we have an app.py which runs a to-do list API, uh, the next thing which we have to do is basically deploy it. So let's see how we can do that. So I won't be going through the uh, terminal or the command line way of using Heroku because uh, as much as uh, as easy as it is, it's really hard for somebody to visualize what is happening behind the scenes, right? So we'll be using the uh, web interface to actually see how we can use Heroku. So uh, make sure that you log in and you have created a free account on Heroku. So it is free to make an account and then click on new, create new app, give your app a name. This app name is going to be the URL as well. So let's say Flask REST API. Uh, no, nope, somebody's already in. So, test. Uh, no. Nope. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, not the best name, but we can work with it for now. Uh, press on create app. Uh, okay. So, app name must start with a letter, end with a letter. Okay. So, testing. And yeah, great. Let's create our app. And now we need to uh, give Heroku our code so that it can run it and deploy it, right? Deploy an actual server on the internet. So uh, instead of using Heroku CLI, we'll be connecting our repo to GitHub. So we're going to actually push the code. So we're going to push the entire code, which we have here to GitHub. So we have all these files. We'll be pushing all these files to GitHub very easily into like 10, Five two minutes. Just create a new project, Flask, and make it make sure it's public 
add a readme if you want to and press create repository. Now to actually uh, upload your files onto GitHub, all I have to do is just drag and drop them. So let's drag and drop them here. And that's it. That's all we have to do to actually upload our files to GitHub. So now that this is done, we commit the changes. This might take a few seconds, not minutes. So just bear with me here. Uh, yeah, we're done. So we have all of our files here. We have proc file, which contains an app app web unicorn. Next, we have a readme. So the readme is optional, but it's always good to have a readme file. We have a requirements.txt, which is basically all the library which you need. We have a database, so it's not recommended that you actually have a database on GitHub like this uh, without any uh, security on top of it. But since it's just a way to show you how to deploy a project, we'll be having it here. And we have our final app.py file, which has all the code which we need. And now let's see how we can connect it to GitHub. So just go to GitHub Connect. Uh, if you are not logged in, then you, it might ask you for it might it might ask you to log in uh, and connect to GitHub. So I'm already connected to GitHub here. Uh, user have name, so it's rest something. So I just put rest and it's rest flask. So press connect and that's it. So you actually have connected your repository to GitHub. Uh, all you have to do now is basically say deploy a branch. So we have a main branch or the master branch, which is now the main branch. And all we do is uh, press deploy branch and we see our API being deployed on the internet right in front of us in real time. So first, as you can see, uh, it detected that it's a Python app uh, since we told it in the proc file. Then it's installing Python, installing everything that you need or all the libraries. And then the proc file declares a type as web. So it's a web server, a Gunicom web server. And now it sees where to actually launch it from. So this is our URL. So we have a URL ready, just deployed to Heroku. And just to make sure that this is actually deployed, we can just go and check it in the activity tab. And yeah, so we have successfully deployed our application. Let's see the URL for it. So this is the URL. And let's copy this URL so that we'll be testing whether our API is actually there or not. And to test whether our API is working, let's use Postman. So let me bring up Postman in the middle. Let's, yeah. So we'll be doing a get on the API and the endpoint is to do's. So let's send this and see what happens. We press send. Uh, you can see uh, in the body, we already have two tasks inside our to do list and this is how we actually deploy a hero uh, deploy a flask rest api on the internet using heroku so now actually if you guys uh, actually go to this url and the endpoint you can actually uh, make some put request get request uh, create request to it so go ahead actually i would like to see some tasks here uh, just make sure not to spam it uh, because this is just a hobby project and yeah so this is how we create a to-do list or we actually deploy our app to the internet using hero so yeah that is it and thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one